Hey, welcome back. Uh, so this is bottling day of uh, the beer, the uh, extra special bitter that I'm bottling today. Um, it takes a bit of preparation, there's no way of getting around it. And the best time to do it is when the house is empty and there's no one getting in the way. If you're doing it in a brew shed, perfect. But if you're like myself and you, you're doing it inside the house, then you really want, um, you want to get everything done, everything organized, and uh, an empty house is the best way to start. So it's going to be a different setup for everyone on bottling day, but you're going to need uh, the equipment all thought about before you actually do the bottling day. I've got a precise set of uh, scales here to measure out my priming sugar. Uh, I have Star Sand, which is the proprietary uh, sanitizer, which I have in a bottle. I also have it in a bucket. The bucket uh, is just one way of going about it, but I like to put everything in that bucket that I think I might use for the bottling day. So uh, I just dip my bottles into that bucket, uh, clean bottles by the way. Uh, if you are gonna put them in the dishwasher before, just bear in mind, you're going to need to rinse them afterwards. Um, another thing I should say about bottles is when you finish a bottle of beer, take the time to rinse it out there and then. Because come bottling day and you start looking in the bottom of your bottles, you're going to end up seeing all kinds of yeast residue. And if it's dried in, it's very hard to get out and it really, really makes the whole day uh, uh, unenjoyable. So. Take the time to rinse out your bottles, and if you're washing them in the washing machine, in the dishwasher, put it, uh, rinse them out, out under the tap. I dunk wine in a bottle, um, a bucket full of uh, sanitized water, but you can do it with uh, a bottle rinser, which is just a pump, pump action with a spring, spring-loaded system. Uh, probably a lot more efficient on water, but this is just the way I do it. And uh, then pop them all on a sanitized um, bottling tray. I spray my spray my tree with sanitizer. Uh, batch priming bucket, beer up uh, higher than the batch priming bucket so that we can gravity feed it down with one of these, which is an auto siphon. Uh, I have um, my mash paddle here. I literally don't want to be stirring the beer at this point, adding oxygen in. Uh, everything that goes on at this point is, um, is a little bit sketchy in the fact that you're adding oxygen. The second you take off the lid of this beer up here, then you're going to be adding oxygen in. When you pour it into here, there's, a, there's oxygen in there. One of the ways you could uh, circumvent that is if you have CO2 with a regulator, you could pump a bit of, very carefully pump a bit of CO2 into here very carefully pump a little bit of CO2 in into the top. When I say pump it in, I don't actually mean firing loads of CO2 into the beer. I actually just mean a tiny amount that would just sit on the top of the beer and you can fill this up with CO2. Now, I'm not a physicist. I don't know exactly how much that benefits it, but I do know that if I was doing a beer for competition, that's what I do. When I'm just doing beers for myself at home, I don't bother. Okay, so uh, my um, star sand bucket, just a food grade bucket, and I put everything in here that I might need. If I want to take a hydrometer test of the beer just before I put it in, uh, any of the little pieces of apparatus that I might need, my bottling wand, for instance, and the beer caps, uh, sanitize all of those, and then you can just leave them in there. Now, obviously there's other ways of doing it. This is just the way I do it. Uh, water looks a bit murky, but it's all nice fresh water and with the correct amount of star sand in it. When I give it a dust up, it'll foam up in a minute. Okay, as well as all the equipment that you need, one of the things that you should really think about doing uh, is keeping all of your bits and pieces like this for my uh, auto siphon in one container uh, or in a box with a lid on it. Reason being, I just spent 20 minutes having a look for this piece and it was not where it was meant to be, obviously. And all of that adds up to increasing the time of your bottling day, which you don't really want. So good tip, uh, get yourself a box or something with a lid on it and uh, put all your bits and pieces in there, your bungs, your bubblers, your grommets, um, anything that's uh, small and fiddly and can be lost because it will be. 
So using the batch priming calculator, I've measured for a British style ale, uh, 85 grams of sugar, and I've just uh, dissolved that in enough water so that it's uh, not some, about double the amount of water really. Uh, I just don't want it too uh, sticky so that uh, the beer doesn't actually dilute to it when I put it into my uh, batch priming bucket. And I'm just going to boil this now, and when it's boiling, I'm going to give it uh, one minute of full boil, uh, so it's completely sterilised. Put it in my batch priming bucket, and then start um, carefully um, siphoning in my beer into it. Okay, so I have my batch priming bucket sanitised, poured out any drips that are left in the bucket. I've sanitized my bottle in wand, I've attached it to the side. I've made sure that the wand isn't uh, going right down to the base of the beer, it's just sitting above it, so I don't uh, drag in any of the yeast sediments. And I've just uh, purged my hands inside that sanitized water so that everything is completely sanitized and there's no chance of me getting any kind of infection in here. I have my have my batch priming solution here. I'm just going to pour it from the height because I want to get some of that heat out of it. And I'll give it uh, 60 seconds before I start adding in the beer into it. Uh, obviously we're ticking now because I've taken the lid off my beer. Uh, so I don't want to waste any more time um, uh, than I have to getting the beer into there. Okay, so just very simply put a bit of pressure into the coupling one and you'll find it starts gently pouring into the base of your beer. So the tubing is coming into the beer but I made sure that the tubing is touching the base of the beer so I can't see the tubing, it's just raising up around, the beer is raising up around it. Uh, that won't take no more than uh, four or five minutes maximum and uh, put into my batch priming calculator 85 grams of sugar was just the right amount for uh, two volumes of carbon dioxide um, it's not unusual to use less than that for an english style beer but i've gone with two because uh, i just prefer that amount of carbonation in my beer now if i was pulling out of a pump i might go with uh, 1.8 or something similar to that and that's it and then when I get close to the end of my beer I'm just going to be careful that I don't draw in any of the unwanted uh, yeast and I might even save the yeast at the bottom and if I do that I'm going to leave a small bit of uh, beer in on top so that I can transfer the yeast into a sanitized uh, kiln or jar uh, with a bit of the beer that I already have on top and then maybe brew with it again in the next uh, few days time. So if I want to take a gravity reading, I need to take it before I put uh, the beer through into the sugar solution. Um, so I'm just going to dip in there from the other side and take a, take a sample of the beer. I've sanitised my hands. I'm going to do my best to not touch the beer while I'm filling this tube up. I'm just going to put the lid back on. And I'll just pop that there. The beer is fairly clear and so it's looking good. There's no yeast residue on top of the beer, so I know that the beer is completely finished fermenting. And we should be, we're only two minutes in and most of the beer is already transferred into my batch priming bucket. Uh, the beer started at 10, I believe it was 10.52, I'll check my records on that. It's going to spill a bit over the top, but for the video we won't worry too much about that. If the beer has reached 10, 10.16 or 10.17, which is just perfect. Okay, so now taking my auto siphon out, I can remove this. I do want to clean it, but I don't want to clean it yet. I do want to get uh, uh, get the beer bottled. Uh, so my next job is to bring the beer up the top. I'm going to bring it slightly over to the side. 
and I'm gonna quickly take all my bottles off and line them up on the floor. I've affixed my auto siphon back on and I have my bottling wand here ready and on top of the bottling wand is the reducer. This just reduces the size of this tube in for this tube in but all bottling wands come with them. Uh, the bottling wand has been fully sanitized and, and my, my beer caps on the ground, you can't see them right now. I'm just going to place my bottling wand straight into the bottle and I'm going to auto siphon pump my first beer in. And once you get the first beer in, what you're going to find is you don't need to touch that auto siphon again. Uh, by having the um, towels down on the ground, it's uh, really useful for me to just say it's not, say it's on mopping up. If you're doing it out in the uh, shed, it's probably best to put something down underneath your bottle and even there as well, because what you find is uh, beer attracts flies. So the least amount of sugar or beer you can leave uh, wherever you're going or wherever you're bottling or doing anything to do with beer at all, the better. Um, now some of these bottles, some of these bottles have flip tops on them. As soon as uh, I can, I'm gonna put the flip top on. And with my other hand, I'm gonna dip into my sanitizer. So bottles that are these caps, I'm just gonna pop the caps on as we go. Um, what I want to do, if I pay a little bit better attention to it, is I want to bottle uh, just till the beer is reaching the top of the uh, top of the bottle. That way I know when I pull out the bottling wand I'm going to get exactly I missed it again. I'm going to get exactly the right amount of beer going into my bottles uh, so that there's not much neck space left in my bottles for um, oxygen to oxidize my beer. That's a bit better. Uh, also uh, I have a crate behind me which I'm going to put my beer into Okay, so I've used up all my beer, there was literally nothing left in the bucket at all. And I've made sure that I put my caps on as soon as the beer went into the bottle. Uh, that way we're just reducing the amount of uh, oxidation that's gonna happen, inevitably gonna happen. And then I've removed my bottles from the ground up onto the uh, bottle capping deck, or as that's what I'm calling it for now. Uh, I invested in a really nice uh, bottle capper uh, for the reason that bottling and bottling beer can be a lengthy process and anything you can do to reduce the time during the day would be good. Um, just one more thing to note about the bottles. Uh, the more uh, bottles you have of the exact same uniform size, uh, whether you're doing it with a twin lever capper or with one of these uh, more expensive capping uh, systems. Uh, the more bottles you have the same size, the easier the, uh, the capping process will be. Now I've included um, a commercial style beer bottle that I've just cleaned and sanitized, just to show you that sometimes you might use bottles and the, the, the caps that you have don't fit on them. And you can, if you use a twin lever, you can break the glass of the bottle. It's one of the reasons I invested in this thing here. It makes the whole process very easy. I'll get it show, set up and show you now. Okay, so you can slide this bottle capper up and down to where you want. I have it roughly here for these size bottles. And you can just put it under there. There's a magnetized capping element to this. And you just pull it down. Very simple. And you can have all these bottles done in under five minutes, no problem. When you do cap your bottles, whatever system you're using, make sure you cap it completely. If you, uh, if you cap the beer and you're just bringing it down halfway on a system like this, you can pull it out now, that's, that's fine, but I don't consider that um, a good cap at all. It's not gone around it hard enough yet. Now it has. And it's really clasping hold of that. Okay, so the last thing I need to do with this beer now is just pop it into my crate 
uh, use my sanitizer bottle to spray it down so I'm not attracting any flies and uh, condition it in an area that's warm but not hot but also not cold if it's too cold the uh, re-fermentation that you're looking for in the bottle won't happen or it will but it'll just take a lot lot longer uh, that might be something you want to do specifically with lagering but with the any old ale yeast I really want to get drinking this in the next couple of weeks so I am going to sanitize these bottles and pop them in an area which is which I know is around roughly 18 degrees celsius and uh, then we'll see what they taste like Oh